my name is Monica and welcome back to my channel Moody Reads where I talk about books and things and today I have a tag for you which I was actually like legit tagged in I was tagged in by Read Now Sleep Later who is like another booktube bestie of mine I absolutely adore her and look let's face it I'm getting older I'm actually going to turn 33 this year which we're not going to talk about because I'm fine I don't care so <laughs> without further ado let's get right into the questions and unlike my previous tags where I kind of had the books prepared for when I like had to show them I'm actually going to not do that for this I'm just gonna read the questions and then I'm gonna turn around trying not to um, hurt my back anymore because it's the perfect time to film this video I have a muscle contracture due to migraines it's great highly recommend I mean everybody should be getting muscle freaking contractures all the time but yeah without further ado let's get right into the questions question number one while it's proven too many birthdays can kill you the amount of cake you can eat is still under debate yup name the most recent book that gave you a sugar or a book high hmm sugar or book like I've read a lot of really good books recently uh, all right, I'm going to go for it. I know you just heard about this book, but I'm going to talk about it again. Binti by Neri Okorafor. O Okorafor? I'm sorry, I keep butchering that name. But this book made me want to read all the Afro-futuristic books out there. I absolutely love it. 100% recommend it. And after this, I just, I, I just felt like so good after reading it. It's... Oof, wow, it's such a, such an amazing read. I 100% recommend that you pick this book up and keep an open mind about it because oftentimes we kind of forget that African culture doesn't just automatically get erased in the future and we just all have one culture. Like, African culture can still exist in the future. So, Binti loved it. And it's not just about mud. I keep like I keep going back to that one review that I read that said that this book is just about a woman obsessed with mud and I get angry about it. So ugh, whatever. I love this book. This book gave me such sugar high and it's so short. It's actually a novella. It's so good. Binti. The second question is, sometimes we get older and wiser instead of <laughs> this <laughs> not wiser. Sometimes we get older and wider instead of older and wiser. Name the longest book you've ever read. You know I'm not a fan of big books. We've established this before. So, oh, it's right here. I didn't even have to look for a while. It's The Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss. And this baby is over a thousand pages long. And it shouldn't have been. I'm just going to throw that out there. This this book could have done with some editing. This book is, a, well, at least my Spanish version of this book that I got for my birthday is 1,189 pages, which I'm just going to call 1,200 pages. It's it's actually heavy right now. Um, did I enjoy this book? Parts of it I liked. Parts of it, I think, could have been written out. I'm gonna put this on the floor because I don't want to put it back there so you're just gonna see a big hole there the rest of the video pretend there's an elf that lives in there a magical fairy between my books wouldn't that be a thing number three the best part about pictures is that they're always a younger version of you can I say something I don't appreciate this whole like getting older is bad thing it really isn't and to be honest I think I look a lot better now than I did when I was younger I just feel that my beauty has grown as a woman and not being diminished by age so I just I just want to throw that out there but anyway so name a book that you enjoyed more the first time you read it than the second if you've never reread why not Is there anything like that for me here? Okay. After some consideration, I'm going to go with I do reread books. It's a new thing for me. I used to not reread books. But the reality is 
I only keep books that I consider like favorites and even the books that I read a long time ago when I was a kid for example um, here we have my guilty pleasure read of um, Flowers in the Attic by B.C. Andrews I don't feel that my enjoyment of it has diminished just because I'm older and wiser or whatever I just enjoy them just as much and I also reread very carefully I don't, I don't know I don't know how to explain this I reread very rarely and only when I'm really feeling that I want to relive this story so my answer to this is I do reread but there is no book that I haven't enjoyed just as much when I've reread it than when I read it the first time. I don't know if that's a cop-out answer, but that's what we're going with. And again, I'm putting this down here because I'm gonna ask my husband to put these back in the shelves because turning around hurts. Question number four is, as you get older, you must learn to never skip a bathroom break before jumping in a car ride. Name a book that you read in very few sittings. Have you ever walked to the bathroom holding a book and then blindly, and then blindly fumbled for the door handle? Yes, I have. <laughs> okay, a book that I read in few sittings. I am not going to mention this book because I always mention that I read this in one sitting, which is really rare for me. That's uh, Magic for Liars by Sarah Gailey. Uh, so let's see. What else did I read in very few sittings? I mean, what even constitutes few sittings? Like, is three too many? Like, three days? I don't know what constitutes few sittings okay for this I decided to go with a monster calls by Patrick Ness because I read this in a single sitting and this is one of my favorite stories of all time this is one of my favorite books of all time and I think it fits the prompt as well and I didn't want to go for the only other book that I've ever read in one sitting so well it's not the only other book but the only other book that I constantly mention that I read in one sitting, so I'm gonna go with The Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. Okay, question number five is perfect for me right now. Don't let old age get you down, because it's harder to get you back up these days. Name a book that you had to put down and why. There are plenty of books that I've had to put down for mental health reasons, but I'm actually gonna name a book that infuriated me and that I'm sure is gonna infuriate you because it's a YouTube darling. And that is Lovely War by Julie Berry. I let, okay. I'm gonna let you in to a little secret about myself. I'm a Hellenistic pagan. What that means is that Greek gods to me are not just some like myth out there. I actually, I believe that if there are any gods out there, these are the ones that are it. And I feel this book was really disrespectful and it feels like Julie Berry basically read a wiki article on Greek gods or like a summary about Greek gods and decided to write this book to the point where where she calls I'm not gonna get into the whole Ares and Athena thing and about how war and combat are different and because we tend to call Ares the god of war because Mars became the god of war and Minerva was kind of pushed aside but let me make this straight Athena is the goddess of war and strategy while what's his face Ares is the god of combat. Different things, completely different things. And there's a point in this book where I was like, okay, I'm just gonna ignore it. I understand that people think Ares is the god of war, but I just feel a little bit more care should have been taken into not being disrespectful. <laughs> I don't know. But that's not the only issue I had with this book. I was like, okay, I'll ignore it. I know people think this. This is something that is not unusual, so I'm just gonna ignore it. But then there were two things about, uh, well, three things actually about Aphrodite that I was just like, wiping my hands clean of this book. There is a line in this book that is literally, she had such a perfect, okay, it's not literally like that, but I'm just paraphrasing. She had such a perfect body that it made other women want to give up. 
And if you know anything about Aphrodite, you know that she's the goddess of beauty, which in Greek times meant any kind of freaking beauty, okay? It, and also, Aphrodite herself would be pissed off at that whole, like, making other women want to give up. Like, no, that's not the point of Aphrodite. Why do people think that women have to be pined against each other and we cannot appreciate the beauty of another woman of another woman without thinking that our beauty is not good enough that pissed me the fuck off and then there is another line where i don't know aphrodite apparently can't experience love herself okay whatever do you do you julie berry but then there is a woman that is described as not like other girls and that was the point where i was like fuck this book and i don't understand how this got through the filter of youtube community of the youtube book community in general L like she is described as like she wasn't like those girls who who knows what they were thinking she was respectful and um shy and you know because obviously all girls are not like that it's like her she's the one that's like that we we girls we just all of us have like a hive mind and then like a few of us get out of that hive mind also being like other girls sucks right so I put down that book because I wasn't going to put up with that shit. Sorry, got a little bit intense there for a moment. But it's just it really pisses me off. I hate pining women against each other like that. And I hate that they took the goddess of beauty and love and women in general. And they were like, oh, she makes other women want to give up. Ugh. Ugh. See, this is this is why we can't have nice things. Anyway, question number six is Age isn't how long you've been alive. It's how many lives you've lived. What book genres have you been wanting to try outside of your comfort zone? Um, I feel that I am pretty varied when it comes to my reading. I read nonfiction. I read classics. I read YA. I read... I guess I don't read romance, but I'm not tempted to try romance because I really don't like reading smut because here's something you don't know about me. I used to write for a porn magazine for a really long time and uh, I just uh, kind of got over it. Like, I just didn't enjoy, I don't enjoy reading about sex because I had to write about sex a lot and it just got repetitive and I, I just don't enjoy it. But if you like it, I'm, I support you, just so you know. Uh, yeah, there's really nothing that I can think of because I guess fantasy, but I realized recently that I read more fantasy than I thought. Like I definitely steer more towards sci-fi, but I really like fantasy. I guess not a book genre, but maybe a book an author that i really want to get into that i it's outside of my comfort zone is jane austen i kind of had a period when i was younger of hating on jane austen even though i had never read her books because sometimes when you're younger you are not as wise as you are when you are older and i'm looking forward to reading a bunch of her books actually so i'm gonna go with instead of a genre i'm gonna go with just jane austen in general and I'm actually pretty excited to read Emma this month, so yay! Question number seven is, life gets worse the older you get. No, it doesn't. Why, why is this tag like this? I hate this idea that aging is horrible. Like, do you know how lucky we are to age? Do you know how much better I feel about myself, about my body, about who I am as a person now that I'm older? Like, I'm not saying that you can't feel these things when you're younger, but I just hate this idea that growing older means that everything sucks. It doesn't. We that have grown a little bit older and those that are even older, 
will always tell you how lucky we are that we get to op the opportunity to grow older. So that's just, I'm just ranting this whole time about this, this tag. I'm really enjoying the tag, but I just hate this idea that growing older means shit, you know, like, like it's such a shitty thing that you grow older. And, and then I think about all of those people that weren't giving the chance to grow older listening to somebody say that. And it like upsets me, it hurts my heart. And I'm gonna talk about my hair for a moment. You know that I leave my white hair as it is because, not because I'm trying to make a, a statement or anything. Honestly, it's because I kind of look like Rogue from X-Men. And also because I hate dyeing my hair every month just to cover up the fact that I have gray hair and that is associated with being older. I've had gray hair since I was 14. I always had this gray hair. So I just don't like the, the association of growing older means worse because the luck we have to be older is one that is taken from many people. So can we please stop? Oh, there's a word in Spanish that is perfect and I can't translate it. Can we please stop demeaning being older? Because there's truly nothing wrong with it. In fact, we are the lucky ones and we're not even that old. Rant over, let's continue with the question. Life gets worse the older you get. Luckily, you don't have much left. Okay. Name a book that slowly turned sour for you, but you finished anyways. Were you glad you stuck it out? I have the fit, the, pe the perfect book for it, and that is uh, A Wise Man's Fear by Pat Patrick Nets. No, by Patrick Rothfuss. It turned sour for me because I thought that this book needed a really intense edit, and there's like we all know there's a, a couple of scenes that are really problematic here, but. I, I'll, I'll, we'll talk about problematic things in books and authors later in the, in the week. But was I glad that I stuck it out? Yeah, totally. I, I'm really glad that I stuck it out. First of all, it's the longest book I've ever read. And second of all, uh, I really want to know what happens in this story. So yeah, I'm glad I stuck it out. Old age isn't about sticking it out, people. Old age should be appreciated. All right. Question number eight. Peer pressure seems to decrease as you get older. Lie. But okay. Where did all your friends go? I still have friends. Name a book that you checked out because of peer pressure. Were you happy to have tried it? And I have the perfect book for this because I think I mentioned it in another tag. In another tag. And it's up here and that's Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. Everybody was like, read Brandon Sanderson. And I was like, okay, fine, I'll read Brandon Sanderson. And I am so glad that I did because I really enjoyed this book up until the very end. And um, if you saw my week reading vlog, I talk more about that. But yeah, I'm really glad that I got peer pressured into reading a Brandon Sanderson book. And I promise you all get to the Mistborn series, okay? I just have a lot of books to read. Friends don't let friends get older alone. That, I like that because we should stick together. And how nice is it to grow old with people you love? So tag some people. All right, the people that I'm going to tag is I'm gonna tag my lovely, lovely friend, Aurora from Dark Academia Cafe. I feel that her and I are like kindred spirits separated by distance, which is not that very long, actually, not that very big of a distance. We are actually both European YouTubers, so that's cool. I'm also gonna tag Elfie from Elfie Reads because Elfie is bestie. I adore Elfie. Next up, I'm gonna tag, I mean, I'm gonna read this because I'm not gonna get names wrong this time. I'm gonna write Connor, I'm gonna write, I'm gonna tag Connor Stompanato, sorry Connor for men for pronouncing your name like that, but that's how we're gonna go with it, Connor. So your tag, you're it. I also wanna tag May Cho from May Cho. <laughs> that's her channel name. I wanna tag Mafalda from Mafalda. 
I love Mafalda, I love her content and I love that again we are both so close. I love other European booktubers and I also feel like Mafalda and I could totally be friends in real life. Um, you hear that Mafalda? We could totally be friends. I feel it in my soul. And finally I'm gonna tag Emma from A Cup of Books. I love Emma. Emma is who got me back into reading nonfiction, and I hope that she will do this tag. Of course, all of you, you're not forced to do this tag, although I would really love to see your answers. And I would love for everybody to frame this in a more positive light than aging is shit. Because aging is awesome, let me tell you. The older I get, the better I feel about myself. So I'm very happy to get older and older and I can't wait till I have wrinkles. Life is such a great adventure and the more you live of it, the better. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for watching me rant. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. You have no idea how much it means to me that you guys are here. And just as a reminder, I post videos every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And sometimes, if I'm feeling a little bit extra, I'll post on Tuesdays and Thursdays too. But never Saturday and Sunday because your girls need to rest. And well, with that being said, my camera is flashing at me. So I'm just going to bid you adieu. And I hope that you are lucky enough to get old, all right? I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.